Welcome to Telly Talk, where we talk about what's on the telly. I feel like I'm playing the cool kid character from Batman. Um, <laughs> what's up, guys? What's up, Telly Talkers? Welcome what's back to up, another episode. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Telly Talk, where we talk about what's on the telly. And by that, we mean what's on our minds, because we're Telly. I'm Tyler, and I am not a film major. I'm Sol, and I'm a Sambalabalabist. And it's Film History Month here at Tele Productions, which means we're going yeah! to different important historical films. Today, we're talking about The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Yay! Right? Yeah. Swag. Yeah. And this is a movie that is from the 1920s. 19... From 20s. 1919. I was so close. So close. Um, it, is, it is a German movie that... Soul is going to tell us more about the history of, Yay! like, in film histo history, <laughs> German expressionism, I believe you said yes, it was called. German expressionism. I pay attention to you. I pay fucking wow. attention to you. Um, That's <laughs> I'm over here saying shit like German expressionism. What? <laughs> what? And this movie is, it's it's a silent film. It's in black and white. No, it's and not. it is, it's not in black and white. Well, technically it is, but it's technically colored. I think mine was in black and white. Yours was in black? You didn't see the colors? Oh, no. You gotta watch it again. Go watch it. Go watch it in color. <laughs> I think mine was in black it's not and white. That, it's not that important, but, like, I'll, I'll tell you. There's not, like, specific... Um, eh, and it. it's, it's uh, an important historical film. I believe it is the first time that film had a plot twist in it. So... We're gonna get to hear more about that today, and it's about it's about this guy who <laughs> I don't remember the plot. You want to tell it's, about it's the kinda, plot? It's kind of it's kind of complicated. So basically, let me tell you some information about the movie first. So this is technically the first horror movie ever made. German that too created the horror genre. Isn't that surprising? Yeah, Germans! <laughs> Give us a round of applause for Germans. Woo! What other horrifying things Whoa, have they done? Germans! Yeah, Germans! Moment of silent for that. <clears throat> so this movie was essentially a, a reflection on the German government and like their political forces during World War I. Because the writers of the movie were soldiers in World War One, and when they came back, they're like, let's write something about the authority abuse and brutality that we went through during World War One." And so they wrote this. Okay, this movie's basically about a, uh, a sleepwalking guy who murders people. <laughs> that's your rundown before we get into it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And so yeah. that guy, his name is Cesare, he, he's supposed to represent, like, the common man, or, like, just, like, the common person who's turned into a soldier and trained and told to kill people, um, kind of unwillingly, because Cesare is asleep, technically, and he isn't fully conscious of what he's doing. And this was also released around the time that people, the border countries, were starting to open up their, uh, like, borders to Germany again. It got released internationally, and people people loved it um, because it's something they never seen before, obviously, and it's a new style they've never seen before. Uh, it okay, this style was so interesting because everyone knows like that really classic um, silent film vibe, but like it's like so stereotypical. Like this was exactly ex what you picture an yeah, old silent like, film to be. Yeah. But I was watching this, and I was like, even though I know this is exactly correct in the exact vibe, I'm not sure if I've ever actually watched a silent film before. I can't remember if I ever have watched one. Not in my memory. So it's in, like, why do I know that exact vibe? I guess German Expressionism as a whole was a huge influence on American horror and American, like, film noir. Oh, I believe it. So the style of... German expressionism, expressionism is, like, very angular, monochromatic, like, dark, like, vignette heavy. Like, the vignette on this movie was so heavy. It was, like, a tight circle around around the, the screen. Like, it, it, it was just, like, there was a, it was oh, kind of like a pinhole was... version 
essentially. I was gonna ask about that. I was gonna ask if that is something that they do in post-production, or is that, like, something they do to the camera lens while they were filming this? I'm pretty sure they just put, like, a cone around the lens. That's what I was thinking when I was watching it. Because this was a silent film, there was a lot of text on the screen. Like, it's like a little PowerPoint where they would show a yes, scene and then yeah. there'd be text to show what they were saying. And I just want to say that the they changed fonts depending on what they were showing. Like, if they were showing a newspaper or a diary, they would use a different font. But the really standard font they used for most of the film was so horror, it was almost hard to read. Like, it, it was yeah. just a weird font. <laughs> it was so weird. I'm going to talk to you about the colors. So... It wasn't colored like A Trip to the Moon was colored, where, like, each individual piece of clothing was a different color or something. It was just the entire screen was a specific color. Like, you know how Twilight's tinted, like, blue and the new moon's, yeah. like, yellow? It was kind of like that, where each color represented a time of day and then kind of, like, a, a tone or, like, a mood of the scene. So whenever it was day, it was, like, orangey and yellow. And whenever it was, it was night, it was, like, blue... I think a little green. And then there was like a couple pink scenes. That's kind of cool. And it was like bright pink. And I was, it was only when like the fiance was in the room. And I think it meant like romance or something. But nothing like romantic happened. Really? It was just like she was the focus of that scene. And so it was entirely pink. Mm. It wasn't that important, but it was kind of like to help you figure out what time of day it was. No, that's actually a really cool way of like doing film. Some fun facts about the set itself, most, all shadows that weren't made by people were painted. So like the lamp shadows, the building shadows, like they, they, you see it on the ground, are all painted. They're all mm. painted. Oh. And then I thought that the Dr. Caligari man had really interesting hair for most of the movies. Like he just, his hair looked weird. It was like he had braids on a bald head. I don't know. It was weird. No, and then at the end like... of the movie, it was fine. His hair was normal at the end of the movie. It was like painted white, like he had a really bad comb over. He reminded me of Scrooge McDuck, and I feel like, I really hope that they took inspiration from him. German expressionism. Right, right. Let me, let me tell you the plot of this movie that we were talking about for the past 20 minutes. <clears throat> so the plot of Dr. Caligari is basically this, this guy, his name is Francis. He, there's the first scene where he is sitting in the garden and is like, he sees this woman in a white dress and he's like, that's my fiance. And the guy sitting next to him is like, okay, buddy. Yes, that lady is your fiance. And then it, it's kind of like a flashback or something. Yeah. And it's kind of like, the inference you get from that scene is like, oh, are they both dead now? Because the lady in the white dress kind of looks like she's floating around like she looks dead i'm like okay she might be dead Tyler, she's not dead she's just insane and so we cut to like the town there's uh, a town fair happening and francis and his buddy alan uh go to this fair his his alan like drags francis to the fair um, and Dr. Caligari is there. He gets a he tries to get a permit from the town clerk to present his show, the 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 sleeping man, the somnambulist or whatever it's called. Um, and the town clerk is like being an asshole. He's like, "You have to sit there and wait. I'm not I'm not talking to you." And then he waits, and then the town clerk leaves, and the the guy's like, "What about my permit?" And he's like, "Go talk to these people." And he's like, oh, "I'll get you back for that." And he does, because later that night, the town clerk dies, and we're like, he dies. that's crazy, how does it, why did the town clerk die, that's, that's, that's crazy, and we don't know who killed him, um, basically, Ellen, no and, idea. Ellen and Francis goes and sees Dr. Caligari's show, and sees the sleeping man who's Cesare, I thought it was Caesar, I thought his name was Caesar, but I, oh, Cesare. I read it as Caesar. His name is Not Cesare. I, I was so confused when my professor was talking about the, the guy. I was like, who the fuck is Cesare? And then they they refer to the guy as like this fancy medical condition that I look up and it just means sleepwalker. But they, yeah. they like a symbolist. I don't know. It's like a some some numbalist. Some numbalist. Some numbalist. Yeah, it's just it's like sleepwalker. It means sleepwalker. Yeah. And so 
They go to him, and Dr. Caligari's like, this guy can see the past and the future and everything. He knows the answers to every question. Someone come up and ask him a question. And so Alan is like, I'll ask him a question. When am I going to die? And the guy wakes up, Cesare wakes up, and is like, you're going to die when dawn breaks. And Alan's like, what? And so Francis and Alan walk home and are like, well, good luck, buddy. Have a time of your life dying. Alan's like, yep. And he's like, kind of not really, he literally just goes to sleep. Like, he doesn't stay up scared. He just goes to sleep. And in the middle of the night, a uh, shadow comes and murders him. We don't know technically who it is yet. We all have an inference that it is Cesare. Um, and the police come and are like, he's been murdered. This is two murders that's happened in like the past two days. This is a serial killer. And so they find this random guy on the street who possesses a, like a really big knife who's asking suspicious and they're like this is the murderer he's going to jail and so and the murderer is like i didn't do it like this isn't me and he's like very suspicious he probably did do something but he wasn't caught for it anyways yeah so then i kind of get lost in what happens here but the fiance uh, Francis's fiance, who's the woman in the white dress at the beginning of the movie, she meets Dr. Caligari and is like, hey, you should come and see my sleeping man. And she's like, okay. And so she sees the sleeping man and he like scares her and she runs home and is like, you're scary. You're going to kill me. Oh my God. And so that night, we see Cesare for the first time uh, attacking the fiancé. We think that she's been killed, but she's not been killed. It's a little unclear, um, but she's alive. And so he essentially takes her body and, like, runs away with it. I don't necessarily know why. Um, and Francis and, like, the policemen catch Cesare, or they they catch, they find out that his fiance's missing, and that he, she's been, like, kidnapped by the killer. And they go to the prison and see that the suspected murderer is still in jail. So it could be him. So he's cleared. And the murderer's still out there. So they follow the tracks of this murderer, catch up to Cesare. Cesare drops the fiance on this bridge and keeps running. And then he, like, wakes up and then falls asleep in, like, a field or something. And the fiancé's like, it's Cesare! And everyone's like, what? No, it's not. That he's, like, sleeping and not alive, blah, blah, blah. And so they go and investigate Dr. Caligari, and he uses a dummy of Cesare in his little box in his cabinet. And they go and investigate it, and they're like, oh, this is a fake body! Where is Cesare? And he's like, I don't know. And so Dr. Caligari runs away, like, really fast, and Francis follows him, and... Caligari runs into an insane asylum, and you're like, where the fuck is this going now? And so, you run into the- Francis runs into the insane asylum after him, and he walks up to a doctor and is like, do you have a patient here by Dr. Caligari? And the dude's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, no we don't. And so he calls a bunch of other doctors and they're like, do you know Caligari? And they're like, no, I don't know Caligari. And he's like, you can go ask the director of the asylum. And so Francis goes up to the director and is like, hey, do you have a patient by Dr. Caligari? And they're director turns around and it is dr caligari and you're like oh my god he's the director of the insane asylum that's fucking crazy and so he he's like he runs away and he goes to the doctors and he's like guys like the director is dr caligari he's fucking crazy like let's go and like read into this and so when his color is sleeping they go to his office and like read all his books and his little diary of the story about dr caligari and how he has this, like, sleeping man. And do you, I don't, do you think it's his diary? Or it's a story of this guy named Dr. Caligari who's done these things? Because I'm my still confused understanding, about that. My understanding is that the current doctor wrote in his diary that he discovered the previous doctor and was like so it was like it was a previous doctor who did those things and then the current doctor was like oh my god i want to do that okay so this guy 
Yeah, because he has that little psycho scene where he's, like, walking around outside and, like, there's text that shows up on the screen that's, like, Become Caligari. You are Dr. Caligari. And he's, like, yes, I am Dr. Caligari. And so Francis convinces the doctors that Dr. Caligari is a crazy person and they throw him in a cell. And then it another twist happens where um, Francis, like, goes back downstairs or whatever and then, like, all the people that you've seen are, like, in the asylum, like, wandering around like crazy people. And, like, his fiance's there in his white dress, and she's, like, just, like, brain dead. And it's just, like, I am the lady of the light, and, like, blah, blah, blah. She's, like, this, like, she's kind of, like, a an oracle or something. I don't know. But he's, like, what are you guys, what's happening? Like, what is happening? And then the doctors come and are, like, what are you talking about? He's, like, Dr. Caligari and, like, the the sleeping man. Like, what is all this? And he's, like what the fuck are you talking about? Like, none of that's real. You're crazy. And he's like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. And so they throw him in a cell and Dr. Caligari, the director, walks out and is like, you're crazy. And he's like, what? No, you're Dr. Caligari. And he's like, Dr. Caligari does not exist. And that's how it ends. No, it ends with him being like, I know what's wrong with him now. He thinks I'm the famous Dr. Caligari who did these experiments. Now I can fix him. Yeah. Um, it was so interesting. So, it's kind of like it had two plot twists, because the first plot twist is that, like, the guy murdering people is running an experiment to copy a different guy who murdered people. Like, there was a guy named Dr. Caligari who used sleepwalkers to murder people, and then this doctor was like, ooh, I want to see if that works. I Oh my god, they gave me a sleepwalker. I'm going to run unethical experiments with him. And it's really dark, because it's like forcing someone to murder against their will. Like, that's a dark concept in a movie. And then you find out, like, he's not the original Dr. Caligari. He's just pretending to be Dr. Caligari to copy him. And then the actual plot twist is, like, this is the first it was all a dream trope. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It's the first plot twist in a movie, and people had read plot twists before in books. And this actually kind of reminded me of Edgar Allan Poe's style because of the unreliable narrator. Um, but it was still, it was the first time that, like, that trope was used in film. And I think that's really cool. So... You know his, you know Francis, the crazy guy. He he had a friend who was murdered by the sleepwalker. I was wondering if Francis was the person who killed him, because they both like the same girl. But like, how does how does his friend dying fit into him imagining this whole thing? I don't know. Like, I was just confused how much of this like happened. Like, I never really happened. I never really thought that like I never really thought of like the perspective of oh this entire thing is a dream. And then did he was this like a delusion or was this like a fantasy? Like I I was curious how much control he had over these thoughts because I was curious if this was like a desire to switch the roles and put the director in the asylum as opposed to him being in the asylum or if this was just a straight delusion. I had lots of questions. I have no idea. Because I don't think it was written that well, or they didn't portray the writing I don't think they thought it through. Film. I don't think they thought through the plot twist to the implications it would have for the previous part of the movie. Yeah. That's my only concern with it, but it must have been cool to experience, like... When not a lot of films existed, I guess. Yeah. Cool things about the movie. I don't understand the war messaging for it, but as from a medical perspective, it's cool. If you ignore the delusion part and just like the original plot before the final plot twist with just like the Dr. Caligari, it's like a critique of pushing, like valuing knowledge over a patient because he's abusing his patient to get more knowledge. So yeah. that's an interesting, uh, like thing to talk about in a film. I think and the then... war thing is controlling people to kill that makes sense i like that that's cool i don't get the other Um, stuff that people wrote okay my thoughts on the movie overall it i know this was probably just a style and like i guess since it was silent it just felt weird but like sometimes they would just linger on shots for too long and i felt like they could have just cut shots off earlier and that bothered me and i 
I did think the plot was cool, but it because it was so long, it was hard. It was hard to get through. But if you have the patience to sit through it and follow along, the plot of the movie is actually really good. It is a really cool it, concept. It was more normal than the other movie we watched. Yeah, well, that one was based on fantasy books. Mm, that makes sense. And I, I think this one's supposed to be more realistic. What would you rate this movie? I give it like a, a two point eight. I'm gonna give it a three. It was good. Um, probably wouldn't watch it again, but it was good. <laughs> I liked it. Like I forgot. I was kind of like dreading watching this. Not gonna lie, but then when I watched it, I forgot how much I liked the art style of it, and I really enjoyed it for that. But because it was so confusing, I kind of fell out of it. Also, the yeah, since the title cards were in German, I was kind of like mm. yeah, that was also hard to follow. <laughs> Just like signs, like for the asylum, yeah. German. Actually, there was one part where. When Dr. Caligari goes into the asylum, the sign says insane asylum, like in English. And then when it does uh -oh. a close-up of Francis going in, it says it in German. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's so interesting that they did that. I don't know why they did that, but they did that. Well, who's your favorite character? Uh, I like the guy who was like, when am I gonna die? And then died. <laughs> Alan? Yeah, I'm an Alan kind of guy. You are an Alan kind of guy. Not the main character for once. I like... I like Cesare. Cesare, cool my boy Caesar. My boy Caesar. Thanks for watching, guys. We post videos every other Tuesday, and we have Teletalk that comes out every Friday sometimes uh, that you guys are currently watching now and that you should watch more of. We have plenty of other episodes that you can watch while you're waiting. Uh, if you want to listen... On Spotify, we do have a Spotify that you can look up Teletalk on. We have most episodes on Spotify in audio and sometimes video form, but don't watch the video form. Just listen to it in audio. Uh, the links are all in the description. Same with our social media. You should follow us on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and Twitch. We don't stream anymore. We did. We might in the future. I don't know. Not currently. We do have plenty of more funny videos. We have gaming videos, we have ranking videos, we have vlogs, we have IRL challenges, games, all fun stuff that you guys should Man, definitely Man, we scripted go watch. all this? No, I'm kind of ad-libbing here. Um, mm. That's also garbage. Uh, bye, guys. Bye!